I have to ask the question. If if we were to make your Jordan Peterson the president of the, the world and these were your decisions to make, do you know what you would have done um, differently or in response to this virus emerging in Wuhan? I would say, well, thank you for the offer, but I declined the position. And <laughs> the reason I would say that is because I think the right solution to the most serious problems is to be found at the level of the individual. So I don't think if I wanted to pursue what I regarded as the ultimate goal, I, the ultimate goal for me is the encouragement of the individual. And that's not, a, that's not essentially a political enterprise. It's essentially a theological enterprise. And politics has to be subordinate to that. And so I've debated throughout the entire course of my life whether I would adopt a political career. It was my initial ambition when I was very young, 14, I would say. But when push came to shove at every decision point in my life, if I had to choose between working on the encouragement of the individual and pursuing a, or pursuing a political career, um, I always chose the, the former. And that's happened every time the decision has come up. I've been approached by people in Canada to involve myself more deeply in a practical role um, and also publicly as a political figure, but I'd rather do what I'm doing. I'm in contact with people working politically all the time, both on the people in the middle, people on the right, people on the left. I'm agnostic about that because I know full well that conservatives have something to say and left-leaning liberals have something to say. That's basically predicated to some degree on their temperament. So conservatives tend to be more conscientious. So that's orderly and industrious, dutiful, patriotic, uh, willing to make and keep verbal contracts, reliable, capable of implementation at the level of detail. So that's kind of conservative virtues there, but they tend to be lower in creativity, openness to experience. They don't think as divergently and their conscientiousness tends to constrain their creativity. Whereas the liberal types, they're high in openness to experience. That's the creativity dimension, but they tend to be lower in conscientiousness, particularly orderliness. And so what that means is those with a liberal temperament tend to be creative slash entrepreneurs, and those with a conservative temperament tend to be managerial and administrative. That doesn't mean they can't run businesses well, you want a conservative person to run your business. You might want a more liberal person to pepper you with off-the-wall ideas, you know. And then if you're going to run an enterprise, business, or a society, there has to be a continual dialogue between people of different temperaments so that we can keep the ship of state, let's say, tracking to an ever-moving destination. That's why free speech is so necessary. It's not another right. It's the right. So, because none of us know what's going on in the final analysis, because the future is different than the past, really. We have to talk about what to do all the time. Because even if we made wise decisions in the past, that doesn't mean that we can mindlessly replicate those decisions right now in the present to deal with a changing future. So, I want to help encourage people to become the sort of people who can engage in that free dialogue. And I think that's the best way forward, especially as we all become more technologically powerful. It's like, you better be smart enough to use your iPhone. And that's pretty damn smart, let's say wise, because that's no trivial gadget. And if you're not careful with it, it will turn on you. It will build authoritarian presumptions into our artificial intelligence systems, for example. And then look the hell out. So if you're going to have hydrogen bomb 